Hi all and welcome back to my ongoing Let's Play of Sea of Stars. We have just had our meeting with the council and we are about to press on. But before we do, I just want to say that if you're enjoying the channel or this Let's Play, I would love it if you hit those like and subscribe buttons. And for those who just did, thank you very much. And for the rest of you, of course, it's super cool to tag along for this adventure anyway. And as always, during gameplay, there will be no general talking but I will be reading information and dialogue. Let's continue. Carl, hey, what's your name? Pundi, why do you ask? Great one. One sec. All right, I don't have a lot of time, so we should split up. What? I'm staying with you. There's no time. Just trust me, okay? I'm in charge of Earth, anyway. No danger on my path. And where is that? Remember Malcolmud? He promised he would come around if a good deed demanded his magic. You think he can terraform a volcano? Yep. Plus, the design I have in mind is pretty straightforward. Hmm. Anyway, Zale, you're in charge of air. West of here is a skyland you can access using the wind key they gave us. Find Zether and bottle it up. Consider it done. Belair, you get fire. Go through the volcano and defeat the lava monster. Then we can redirect the heat and terraform the summit into a giant kill. Got it. Sarai, that leaves water. After dropping Valera off at the volcano, get Hortons to take you back to the Sea of Nightmare. But please don't kill Hydralion. We only need one scale. Okay. Once you have the scale, just take it to Teaks in mirth. The villagers will come together to grow and harvest the crops. Get as much as you can on the Vespertine and meet us at the volcano. Well, that will be Kiln Mountain by then, I guess. Understood. So first, those who will use the boat. Valer and Sirai, please stand in front of Panty here. What about me? Oh, I... Well, I assumed you weren't allowed to help. This matter isn't related to a dweller. I am free to choose. Uh, okay. Well, the four elements are assigned, but I guess you can join one of the teams. There won't be any danger on my path, though, so who else do you want to help? All three. <gasps> this guy is good. Okay, Valer. Now say car. Hmm. To car? Pretty cool, huh? All right, Zale. I'll see you over at Kiln Mountain once we have everything. Stay safe, Carl. You bet. <coughs> I'm all right. Don't worry. Extol. The Skyland is west of this village. Lead the way.
Air Elemental Skyline. Wind Key. Given by the Scout Count Sky Council to open the way to the Air Elemental Skyline. Zephyr is in there, but we'll need something that can shatter the crystal. Let's explore a bit.
Stay strong, say. You will see your friends again before his time is up. Oh, you found a new artifact. Let's see here. New story unlocked. Kukar, the unyielding. Hey, want to hear a story? Yes. Which one? Kukar, the unyielding. Of the many events from the time of the Ovates, many consider the foundation of the kingdom and the clouds to be the most significant. It was back in the early days, when the world was still being shaped. Once they had completed the islands, they started working on the travel golems. The Ovates first built Yeet and Extol, and rejoiced at the ease with which they could activate them using power words. But for Mesa Island, something more was needed. A sentient golem. One that would not simply obey commands, but carry purpose. The reason was that this specific island was at sea level. But as the Ovates had seen in their dreams, it needed to be propped up way higher. Indeed, in the future there would be a great flood. And for this world to survive, Mesa Island would have to remain above water. Although that future was a very distant one, Ovates remained as selfless as ever in their dedication to harmony and balance. Thus they built Kukar, but alas, found themselves unable to give it sen sentience. Ever embracing the flow of things, the Ovates held firm to the belief that their part in saving Mesa Island had been played. They moved on to completing the vision they had seen in a shared dream, and from the essence of the very clouds conjured the Sky Giants. There would come a time when the Ovates would go extinct, and would fall to the Sky Giants to keep watch. They would be tasked with establishing a council in the clouds to oversee three very important things. First of which was to keep the watch over the elements. While the flood was unavoidable, maintaining balance would remain a challenge unless new Ovates arose. Secondly, they would be the gatekeepers of the Sea of Stars, carefully vetting those who would seek to travel between worlds. Lastly, there was the matter of Kukar. It remained incomplete, and so they would need to be on the lookout for a wielder of magic potent enough to make the construct sentient. In the end, it was the Great Eagle who helped them in this. Nowadays, you are aware of Kukar's purpose, most believing it to be nothing more than an impressive feat of masonry. And even from a prophetic standpoint, there is no real way to know whether it will withstand the coming flood. But until then, Kukar's role would remain a passing one. Holding on with an ever firm grip, he would stand tall, inspiring mortal as a testament to stoicism and true dedication. One need only lay eyes upon the construct once to understand where it got its title of Kukar, the Unyielding. The end. One rainbow conch. Sail and Rishan learned combo skill Hone Flagre. Arcane and Solar Magic Damage, multi hit.
and one cypher score. Here, fire column left stick. Got triangular slab. Would fit in a triangular slot.
Got hexagonal slam. Would fit in a hexagonal slot. I'll run Assassin's Pin. I'll run Sky Armor. He's both heavy and light.
And I think I will actually leave it on a battle cliffhanger. I'll see you in the next part. Thank you all for tagging along in my very first Sea of Stars adventure. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. If you are, please hit those like subscribe buttons and I would love it if I saw you again in the next part. But for now, it's time to say bye bye.